All right, what is going on, guys? Tony here. Welcome back to the War Room Podcast, where we basically just talk to different creators in the scene and just kind of get their overall viewpoints on games in general and content creation. And in this week, I am joined by the illustrious and handsome Talon Dillard, who is a content creator who, again, I we're, this is the second time recording this intro because he had a little bit of a malfunction, but uh, he's a content creator, but doesn't upload as much as I want him to because I enjoy hearing his voice, but um what's going on talon welcome give the people a little rundown of the channel kind of what you like to upload and shit hi hi everyone i am talon and i'm the person that you guys have seen in streams a thousand times or seen in comment sections because i usually get hearts and top comment at the same time but no attention on the channel you know how it goes sometimes for us but uh (laughs) yeah yeah flex i get all these top comments but like no one likes my actual shit (laughs) yeah exactly i mean i make funny quips but that's all i'm good for i'll be here for the rest of my life for a comedy routine but (laughs) my content is basically any content that i really strive towards i can do i do montages i do discussions i can go from one game to the next and typically what i'll do is i'll look into the game in and of itself and I'll break down the components of what makes it good, what makes it bad, and all sorts of discussion type videos pop up on the channel that usually in, it instigates a sense of uh, what, what would we call this? Nostalgia in people, and it creates a lot of thought-provoking process in people's minds and usually my comment section is just full of nothing but paragraph after paragraph after paragraph of nothing but life stories and opinions, and I love it. It's, it's just a little different so uh, another thing that you guys might know me for is the Talon Hates Everyone series. A lot of people have seen that. It's the most popular series on my channel, and I can definitely see why it is. I've had dealings in the past where I've made videos on Baus Phoenix during his argumentative exchange between him and Ubisoft. I did videos on Nate Cadillac, who is arguably one of the most hated and at the same time popular streamers on the on For Honor at this point. And... I did a video on myself that was completely consistent of other content creators, Tony included. I made a video on Illus Truth, and the most recent one is on someone named Angelus, which a lot of you guys probably know about him from his uh, versus the number one videos, which is Mm -hmm. a a really good series. I personally don't watch it that much, but it's just because typically if I'm going to watch like uh, a good matchup, it's not based on a statistic. It's based on like uh, viewer enjoyment. So like a tournament player or something along the lines, like Barrack Yeet or something. Right. Gotcha. Um, so what uh, what kind of made you want to actually, you know, instead of just being, you know, the the normal epic gamer that you, you obviously are into one that wants to put said games into footage and then put that on the YouTube channel? What uh, what kind of made you want to make the videos? And the specifically, I know like you had like a couple videos like on the start of your channel with like COD and stuff and all that, but then you kind of like, you only did like a few, maybe like six or seven of those, and then you kind of went into For Honor. So like, what made you want to do these videos in the first place? And then kind of, what was your main draw at first towards For Honor when when it came out? Well, you did your research, and I do have a couple of Call of Duty videos, but what you failed to miss out on is the 100 plus streams of Call of Duty that I did. I did stream after stream after stream of Black Ops 3, Advanced Warfare, Call of Duty Ghosts, and uh, a little bit of destiny which was not my proudest time i'll be real honest with you i didn't like destiny that much well you don't you don't have those public on your channel talon i can't i can only see what's public i I got rid of all my older videos because i felt as though that was almost a completely different person back in those times and you know i've changed over the years and since it's been about two years since my channel started uh, i really don't feel as though that represents me as a person anymore that's why i take them off uh, as time goes on And it's very likely I'll make content adjustments in the future as well when it comes down to me moving away from a community or me going into some new facet. But the reason that I started my channel and really making content in general was specifically because I wanted friends. (laughs) I was I was this lonely kid that would get on and play with the same group of friends every day. And like I, I would get on and I was I was awful lonely when it came down to it. I've always liked having the spotlight. Even when I was a kid, my parents always told me I'd be doing something performing. And when it comes to attention, I'm always a whore for that. Like, I'm, I'm a dirty little <laughs> slut when it comes to attention. So when I got the opportunity to, to create content based on having a PS4, I was more than happy with that. I was hyped. And Call of Duty was good to me for the time that I had on it. There's actually some subscribers that are still there from Call of Duty, even though I ended it off at 100 subscribers. That's when I moved over to For Honor. 
Right. And the reason that I went to For Honor was because I'd never played anything like it. When I got into it initially, this is the same story that everyone had, I think, is that they just got into it. They didn't play fighting games at first. They didn't really get into stuff like that. A lot of us came from shooters. A lot of us came from fantasy games, MMOs, and uh, battle arenas, but nothing really like For Honor. The closest one I could really compare it to would probably be Dark Souls. Right. And that's not in the sense that there's PvE. It's just that the combat system is very similar in the way that it fluctuates back and forth between the people. There's kind of like momentum shifts similar to that. Right. So me playing Dark Souls in the past, I was really drawn to the game. And once I started improving at it and getting up to a point where by season two, I tried hopping into the competitive scene. Uh, I just wanted to make more and more content as time went on. And, you know, being a Valkyrie player drew a lot of attention to me uh, early on. And it was a lot of fun. So I just kind of stuck with it after that point. So that's, right. that's the reasoning behind all that. Gotcha. That makes That makes complete sense. Now, I know like you're... Your channel is sometimes, you know, you'll you'll go on like a kind of like some a big upload spree where you're kind of pretty consistent. Sometimes you'll take a little bit of break from things, kind of, you know, reevaluate your stuff because you are pretty busy in life yourself. But do you have any specific goals with the, uh, your YouTube channel? Because I know you're nearing in on what, like 9000 subs. You kind of talked about almost like a restructure to a sense of like the type of content you want to put out. Um, and I think you're at least in my opinion, you're probably just trying to figure things out and kind of get like a kind of like a i guess a plan on how you want to release content but do you have any like short or long-term goals for your channel in the short term i want my channel to by at least like january of next year uh to make it to at least ten thousand. i want to make that a goal of mine to upload more consistently and try to get growth back into the channel and hit 10k by january at the very least i think that would be a great term for or no that would be a great ideal for short term but in the long term, man, I've wanted to do YouTube since I figured out that it was a thing. I've wanted to do it as a career. I've wanted to make videos and consistently put out content and break down the time that I have throughout my day. I didn't want to get a normal job. I didn't want to go to college. When I went to college, I ended up getting migraines. When I got a job, I got this crappy minimum wage job that I didn't enjoy. I moved on to a restaurant job that I did enjoy and now I'm moving back and forth. And now I'm just positioned at a, a car dealership doing car detail, which is basically a glorified car wash. So if I were to be able to do YouTube as a full-time career, I think that would be probably the best life that I could have made for myself. Just to be able to succeed in that one aspect would make me happier than anything. Well, that's, so, yeah, that's, and that's you awesome. mentioned a restructure as well. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as a restructure goes, I've always looked at channels like Pyro Cynical and I've looked at channels like Ahoy, who I actually found more recently than anyone else. I think he's my latest subscription in my channel is, is Ahoy. And a lot of people know of Ahoy's videos, but they don't really remember him as a person. Uh, a lot of you guys might know him from his video Polybius, the video game that doesn't exist. It's a super in-depth study of a game that was rumored to exist, rumored not to exist. There's a lot of falsified evidence put out on the internet. And the man did this insane study where he went back over 20 years to try to find evidence of it. Got in contact with people that made leaks and people that had hearsay. And it made him, it, it, I guarantee it took him almost a year to make that one video. And it was incredible to watch. Right. But that kind of commentary style is something that I really like watching. It's something that you can watch for hours and hours on and then never get bored of watching just because of the fact that you're learning more about something that you're interested in. And as far as Pyrocynical, he's able to create content on basically anything he wants. He'd be able to make a game tutorial and people would overflow with happiness. They'd cream their little nine-year-old pants at the thought of him making a, a tutorial on Minecraft Hunger Games. He right. could make he could make pretty much anything and he'd still have the same amount of success because of how loyal his fan base is, not to his content, but to him. So I, I kind of want to restructure my channel similar to what they have. Right. Kind of more so build your personal brand instead of focused on like whatever the content is itself. To have exactly. Pe have people there for you. So, I mean, yeah, that makes that makes com complete sense. Um, I, I agree with that. I'm, I'm actually going to be doing like a little bit of a restructuring myself to kind of more stuff that I enjoy, which will be I'll talk about that later for people who are listening to this. But um, anyways, I know you you mentioned it briefly and I, I kind of want to dive into this because I think it's it's quite interesting. So it's your it's your talent hates everyone, uh, you know, series that, that you started. I know it's, as you said, the most popular series on your channel. And I know Baus was obviously the first episode and then you've done what, like five, 
five or so episodes, I think of uh i think the most recent one was like your fifth episode but um i'm curious like what made you want to dive into like people's channels i mean like because i know like the the bouse uh phoenix situation was was kind of big and it was obviously talked about so obviously people have had heard about it but i kind of want to know what's your what was your thought process behind getting into it and then the next thing like what do you look for if you're looking for channels to maybe potentially feature on this series because i know like you did illish truth and obviously you don't think illish truth is a bad person by any means he's obviously a great creator but like what what is the criteria you kind of look at when diving into these channels typically if i'm looking for a channel to feature it'll have to be one of two things one will be i'm extremely interested by the channel in and of itself recently i found a couple of people that i was really interested in and you might know one or two of them do you watch any dark souls or fighting game content uh yes and no but do you know the name prod no i do not all right well there's a pair of brothers on youtube called prod and super and their channels have both been side by side ever since they started them out super is bigger than prod but you know it's because he goes into bigger franchises than prod does prod is a dark souls almost exclusive he's been branching out into other stuff recently and i'm very happy for him in that sense but both of them sound almost identical when i found prod's channel you know, about a year ago, I was stoked. I was so happy to have a comedic Dark Souls YouTuber that posts consistently and makes consistently good stuff. And he's easily recognizable by his voice. Which is why, a couple of months later, when I heard Super's voice and thought it was Prod, I was like, hold on. I was like, this is, this is a little deeper than the surface. So I looked into it, and I made that connection in my brain. I instantly recognized the voice. So I looked into his featured channels, and there's Prod, Brothers. And I, I was so interested by that. I, they want I want them to be the next episode of Talent Hates Everyone that switches over to a different uh, a different featured channel. Right. Any other criteria would be either they start a problem with me or they start a problem with somebody else in my community. It doesn't matter if it is someone's fault or no one's fault. I like to take a look into situations that you know I might or might not be involved in, might or not might not have a say in it. But I always like observing a different situation such as what happened with spliced whenever we made the episode on him between me and cj uh i wasn't involved in it at all of course but what happens is cj came to me whenever he was uh kind of plotting out how things are going to go down i, I make that sound so bad he, <laughs> he's plotting he's rubbing his hands together like an evil maniac <laughs> but <laughs> What really happened is, as CJ saw that events were transpiring in a downward fashion and kind of spiraling out of control, he needed somebody to help him out with it, and he wanted my expertise on investigation. I've always been good at finding information on people and getting exactly what I need to get in order to prove a point or drive a point across. I mean, there was something interesting that happened in my Discord uh, yesterday, actually, is that I remembered a conversation that I wasn't involved in from over a month ago when one member mentioned someone else's name that wasn't in the server and recently somebody else joined into the server and I see them talking in the chat, they're talking about somebody that they've been talking to or they have a crush on. And I said, I knew who it was. I messaged the guy and I wanted to know if I was right. I remembered who was at the conversation, what they said, how they said it and who they mentioned. And it was a guy that I was talking to. So I remembered month old conversation and then brought it all to hit two plus two equals four. So it was, it was a cool little experience testing out my memory, but when it comes to looking into a situation and getting the information I need to come to a proper conclusion, that's why I get involved in those situations, is because I find it to be challenging and I find it to be fun. I don't do it for views and likes and all that. I don't do it for subscribers. It's stupid to think that. I genuinely care about the community. And if there's somebody being done wrong, of course I'm going to step in and help. I mean, who wouldn't do that for a friend? But... All in all, I think of it as just a fun experience for myself as well as just, you know, sometimes necessary. Right. No, I completely agree. And I think it's also a smart idea to obviously branch out said series into different avenues as well. Obviously going into like Dark Souls or really any any forms of content creation would be a smart idea as well just to kind of delve in and get get uh, more information on different communities and stuff but speaking of communities you know obviously we both have kind of been branching out a little bit but 
you know, a lot of our main subscriber bases have come from For Honor, obviously. And, you know, I thank everybody who has tuned into both mine and Talon's channel from this game. I think that it's it's pretty crazy the amount of the passion in this community, I would say. But, you know, just to let's appease some of the For Honor fans. I do have a couple of questions about the game. In I know you're you're pretty uh, you're good at giving your opinion on things. So I'm, I'm interested to see what you say. So this lol. one's going to be. Yeah, lol. This is going to be a, a little bit of a generalized question at first, but uh, what would you say is the current state of the game in your own opinion? I would say the game is in the healthiest state that it's ever been. And the reason that I say that before anybody crucifies me, like the second coming of Christ, the reason for it <laughs> is because the community is less toxic than it's ever been. During the beginning of the game, it was almost impossible to play a match without getting called a horrible racial slur, and even during the times where I first got my PC months ago, even I, during my first match on PC, got called a San Nigerian, we'll say. All right, that's that's a good way of saying it, I guess. Right. And it, it was awful. But now I can hop on PC or I can hop on console. I won't get hate mail for most of the part. And I, I play Sean. Of course I'm going to get hate mail from time to time. People hate that character, but... I think that the game in and of itself has grown so much more than people realize. As a community, not as a game. The base mechanics of the game are still flawed, but it's impossible to go down from where we started. We started in the worst condition of any game that I've ever seen, and yet we stuck with it. And the reason I think we stuck with it for so long is that we didn't enjoy the game as much as everybody thinks we did. I think we stuck around because we had hope that it would be a good game. Right. I, I completely and we're working agree with that. that still. Yeah. Oh, I completely agree with that. I think. Definitely, because it is it is one of those things that you said uh, before, you can't really compare it too much to any other games. You said like Dark Souls is almost its closest combatant, but and even even so then Dark Souls is a completely different game from this. And it's when you when you see this, it obviously looked like the potential was insane and um, being able to uh, have this sort of like, you know, third person medieval fighter was really, really cool. But uh, now now what I'm, I'm kind of curious to expand on on your response right there. So you think it's in a healthy state. I think myself, it, it's, it's getting better obviously. And then I know, obviously you've probably seen all this like year three stuff being leaked around and all like the roadmaps and stuff. Do you think though that they can still draw in new players to this game? Or do you think they're just trying to simply appease the already, uh, established community because there is such a steep learning curve. It's like a learning fucking roller coaster on this game, is yeah, is, is what honestly. it basically is. So, do you think you know they they keep doing this new content, new characters, all this stuff, new maps, new game modes, new weapons? But I don't honestly think it's bringing in too many new people. I think it's just trying to appease the already established crowd. What do you think about that? Let's take a look at an example that I have here. I was talking to Toxic yesterday, and I brought up a lot of these points, including the hoping that it would be a better game point. And here's another one that I mentioned, was Cypher PK. Right. When it comes to content creators making it out of For Honor, Cypher PK is the golden boy. He mm -hmm. left at around 40,000 subscribers, if I remember correctly. Am I right? Yeah, he had roughly, roughly around there. All right. He's currently at 1.2 million. Yeah, I'd say him and King Richard as well king richard king richard is a bit different king richard's loot is a different story <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true that's true yeah, yeah i've seen that yeah all right well when i look at cypher pk i'm always jealous not because of the fact that he moved over to fortnite i mean jesus christ i would have i would never touch that game with a thousand foot pole at this point i think that that game is possibly one of the most one of the most toxic communities and it's not because of the fact that they don't support their content creators it's just that everyone's always angry when they play it you yeah. know Oh, yeah. That's shooters for you. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's worse than Call of Duty, though, mainly because the demographic of age is so much younger. Mm -hmm. It's just unfiltered baby rage. It's like I'm constantly listening to the inside. I'm on the receiving end of a baby monitor at all times whenever I'm on that game. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I hate it. Yeah, I completely agree. But do I think that they'll draw in new people with new content? Absolutely not. Because... When I get on Instagram, and I'm sure you get on Instagram as well, right? Do you have Instagram? Yep. Okay, you get on there and you've seen that Ubisoft has been paying for promotion on Instagram. Oh, yep. Have you looked at the comments? Uh, no, nope, I haven't, but I probably should have. Nothing but negativity. 
Oh, this game's still alive. Dead game. Dead game. Oh, this game's still alive. Dead game. Dead game. Cancer's community. Awful characters. Can't react to lights. All that. All of it. There's nothing but an exterior wall of hatred that surrounds the community. But at the core, the community is pure. The community loves itself. The community cares for itself. We support each other. The content creators are amazing. This is the best community for content creators I've seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never seen content creators this close aside from things like, you know, a group of friends that met each other via randomized games, things like the Fitz crew and things like right, yeah. Vanoss Gaming, Cartoons, H2O Delirious. They're as close as we are, but at the same time, they weren't brought together by the game. Uh, H2O Delirious and Cartoons met over uh, Gears of War, but they met a lot of their other friends through Call of Duty and then through Gmod. H2O Delirious recently made a friend called Dead Squirrel and he met him on Fortnite. These things all tie together, and they just pick people up along the way. We didn't pick people up along the way. We were thrown together into this massive melding pot, and we just support each other throughout it. I recently got into a donation war with Spliced and got my ass kicked by him, but that's just because I'm a broke boy. I mean, like we, we support each other like no one else, but outside, people can't see that. People can only see that massive wall of hate that is people saying it's a dead game. They can't react to something. There's a bull, there's a bull mechanic that they can't get past. And it, it really has a negative effect on the way that the community grows, specifically because of the people that left and never gave it a second chance. Yeah, I I completely agree. I mean, I think they do this thing, too, that it, it kind of is like, I understand why they do this, but I at the same time, branching I don't out understand. To Fortnite YouTubers? It's like branching out to like, I think I saw like maybe a week ago, you know, the do obviously like on, on YouTube. I'm not too sure if you are aware of them. He does like the guitar videos on like black ops um, i actually am not aware of him so he's, ju he's just basically this guy who can play basically the melodies to any song that people request him and he does that on there and so he's his content is nowhere near what we do and so obviously he's got over a million subs they he did a little promotion for for honor he played it and while they're i know that they're doing it to try to like bring a different community into the game they don't really do paid promotions to people like us because we're already within the community people we're not going to bring any new people in because the people who watch us are already people who play the game but at the same time it's like they post this one video and then they never post it again so it's quickly forgotten and then right push push to the side so it's like i understand why they're doing like all this promotion but at the same time i'm like what the fuck are you doing and it's like uh i don't know it's 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 a long conversation that could get in but i mean i just think because this learning curve is just like you need to put in the time to actually learn the shit. You can't just go in and just, you know, have have fun in it. This isn't Mario Kart. You know, you got to you got to learn matchups, you have to learn punishes and all that stuff and, you know, not everyone's willing to put in that. The casual gamer, I guess, isn't really willing to put in that time. So that's why I feel like it's not going to Although the community is strong and I think the people who want to watch the game is actually really high. Uh the people playing the game, I don't think will increase by that much. What I think is the smartest idea for Ubisoft is to combine both of the exterior and the interior to kind of build a bridge. I mean, I know that they did pay promotions with EFB and with a couple of other content creators in most recent months, and I don't know how well that did. I know that it did well for the creators themselves, but I don't know about growth because those videos didn't get very many views on any end of the things. I know EFB did well on uh, a couple of his videos, but in the end of things, it just really wasn't the smartest idea. But when I saw what they did with cartoons, I looked into his comment section and I kind of scrolled through it. It turned out that there was a lot more support than I expected. There were people from the community saying nice things about the community instead of a bunch of negative comments. It was just a bunch of positivity. And I was very happy to see that. But at the same time, he only made one or two videos and then it was quickly forgotten. So unless people have it repeatedly shown to them that someone's enjoying themselves in the game, their interest will never be peaked. Right. Completely agree. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's, it's just a, I don't, I don't know exactly what they're going to do. Cause obviously it's like the devs don't have the decision. It's basically the higher ups that are going to be making the decisions on everything. So I it's mean, it's just a dead game. It's just a dead game. Let it die. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Well, uh, that kind of actually, you know, really quickly, do you think year three is their last content throw out? Like, the the last year of them making new stuff or do you think they're going to keep continuing i hope it's the last year <laughs> <laughs> what, what why do you hope so talon i hope so because i'm tired of seeing new factions come in to be honest with you i think that like not not really new factions but new new characters same old game 
right? Right. With the Wulin, there's only one unique attribute in the entire thing. Do you know what that unique attribute is out of the entire faction? Is it the traps? It's Nusha's traps. Every other character abides by the same cut and dry rules as every other character. The only thing that they changed is they made two of them impossible to hit. True. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Yeah, I can't fight. I can't fight Zhang Jun with Shaman. I can't mm -hmm. fight Zhang Jun with Valk because both of them are nullified by extended dodge frames. Right. I mean, so I I just yeah. don't get why they would do that. And now, rather than fixing the the broken kits that they brought in, not broken fundamentally unbeatable, but broken as in they don't even work properly. Mm -hmm. They don't. They made an adjustment themselves, saying, "Oh yeah, you know that annoying thing that they can do where they avoid you. We're gonna buff that." Right, yeah. It's... It, it just doesn't make sense. And now they're adding more content without fixing what they've already made. Right. And I'm going to I'm going to actually cycle this into the into this next question, but it's basically what my my buddy Deadfly said. It's basically like it's like cool characters wrong time, but uh Oh, exactly what I think. That's yeah. that's very well said. Yeah, but going into this, do you think that's the biggest flaw with it is that they keep pushing new shit? without fixing the old shit? Do you think that's the biggest issue with the game, or do you think it's something else? I think the biggest issue with the game is the three-way disconnect. A lot of people say it's a disconnect between the community and the developers, but it's not. It is a disconnect between the community, the content creators, and the developers. The content creators are the ones that promote this game. They're the ones that have probably the most expertise on the game. Barrick Yeet and Alarnakin both created channels recently. Not too recently, of course. Alarnakin's had his for a while and Barrick Yeet's had his for a while, but they didn't get any traction at first. Both of them are professional players, and people will honestly go into their comments and call them idiots just for stating an opinion that they don't like. If a character looks broken, it is broken. If I feel this way, it is this way. That disconnect between the content creators and the community is one of the biggest issues alongside the content creators and the developers because we need to be working together as a unit. And yet whenever we run a poll, nine times out of ten, if I were to say, hey, is Shaman OP, I'd get a 98% response rate of yes. Yeah, I mean, everyone... It's like people had that one fucking bad game where a Shaman like actually outplayed them or something and like was probably skillful. In a, in a sense, so, yeah, like and, I got online you can, I, I probably ruined a couple of people's experiences. Yeah, but. like like maybe someone's fucking deflecting you and actually doing like correct bonuses or something. But people obviously Shaman does have a she's got a lot in her kit, right? She's she's got options, which is it's definitely cool. I think every character should have options. But, you know, you I have one Shaman's bad probably the most complete character. Yeah, It's like you have one bad experience and you're like, oh, it's broken. And it's like people say the same thing about Kensei and I I think Kensei is actually probably one of the most balanced characters in the game. Obviously there's some stuff that could be changed with the character like a fucking Hyper armor on soft fucking, lights. fucking buff nature's wrath by the way. Um but uh, I'll trade that. I'll trade that. <laughs> buff nature's wrath get rid of the hyper armor on a soft painted lights. I'm down. Like I mean it's just I and it's like but it's like people are like all you have to do is throw a swift strike and you win. It's like Man, I just think to myself, like, if someone's just doing dodge heavies on you, you just you just need to be patient, man. I mean, so maybe you got caught out by some things. Maybe you weren't ready for it. But it doesn't mean that you go, you know, lambasting the character and then just saying, oh, shit, game, shit, game, bad, terrible design. It takes a while to kind of learn the matchups and stuff. And I feel like a lot of people don't really want to take the time. I joined in on a stream. I joined in on a stream last night and... I played Shaman for a bit because, you know, I'm practicing for the Winter Invitational that Noah's hosting. And You're I'm trying to get... I'm trying to get better with Shaman again because, you know, I'm out of practice, but it was freezing cold in the basement, which is where I'm currently at. That's where I record and all that. I turned on the heater maybe five minutes before and it wasn't warming up fast enough. My hands were freezing and you already know what happens whenever your hands get cold and you try to play a game. They stiffen up. You can't react to things. Your mind can, but your hands cannot. So I'm fighting an Orochi with probably, I think his latency was spiking between 60 and 120. And good lord, a console Orochi with that high latency, 500 MS turns into 350. Almost every attack was blinking, and then I was hit. And that's not even including his chain lights, that's including just the startup. And I couldn't react to any of it. So I got pissed off at that, but after I left that match, I just calmed off. I was cool. I was fine. Because I know for a fact that Orochi is absolute booty cheeks. I know that he can't do anything against the defensive player. There's nothing. Right. His kid is completely nullified by defense. So if I remember myself and I'm like, okay, hands were cold, latency was high, 
calm down. You can do it next time. You know, it's it's simple as that. But people don't want to do that. People will look at Orochi and think light spam is going to kill them and they want him nerfed. But yeah. in actuality, Orochi just he doesn't have anything, dude. And actually in actuality, Orochi is the only reworked character without an actual initiation move yeah. that, that, that they can do. There's no like unblockable kick or stuff like that. I mean, unless you, want to count PK's, unless you count PK's zone. Like PK oh, yeah. zone, yeah. if you count it, sure, but if you don't count it, both PK and Orochi, which were reworked. I guess I guess kind of thought of PK as more of a, a down, they downgraded her instead of like yeah. a, an upgrade. So maybe I mean, she still does have a nice deflect. I mean, Orochi has a good deflect too, but yeah. aside from that, what are you going to do with those characters? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just people people don't get level-headed. People just get angry when playing games. That's just a you can any game that if you're right. if you're passionate so about because, it, you can meta anything. Mm -hmm. So because we're on that still, I'm I'm gonna kind of finish off the statement with if a content creator has more experience than you and they put out an opinion of a game, like I put out with Orochi, and you disagree with it, and you disagree strongly, and a bunch of people disagree strongly because they're at a lower skill cap. That's just that means that you're trying to cater towards lower level rather than trying to get better at the game. That disconnect causes problems because most content creators that I know are at a higher skill cap. We want to enjoy the game. We want to make content on the game. But if every person that we fight has no openers, no abilities, where's the interest that you guys will find in watching? Where's the interest that we'll have in playing? And more importantly, how are the developers going to decide between the two of us to listen to? Right. I mean, it's 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 like it seems like, in at least in my head, that they think that they want this game to be competitive but honestly, a lot of the player base is casual, but I don't think you can balance it towards a casual, you know, player base and to an extent because it's just then then you're just the stuff isn't going to be working as intended either at, at the higher levels. But, you know, this we could go on, I think, on and on about this, but uh, I kind of just wanted to say this last question about the game will transfer over into a couple other questions. But, you know, obviously, we, you made a little joke about a dead game, you know, let it die earlier. Yeah. But what do you what do you actually think about the game if it's dead or not? Because although, you know, it's not at it's not the highest numbers that we've ever seen from a video game. Let's just be completely honest right there. People are still growing. You know, people still like the game and watch it. I, I, I attribute it to it's kind of like a lesser of dead by daylight because dead by daylight has a larger player base than for honor but there's a even larger player base of people who enjoy watching it like when i just stream the game and stuff people are like i've got no idea what the hell it is but it looks cool and i enjoy watching it and i think a lot of the time is the same for for honor because like a lot of my friends who i who are like my irl friends they don't play the game but they're like this looks cool so do you think the game is truly dead maybe as like a player base but i think the community is still kind of thriving what do you think about that uh, if I were to respond with, you know, my first impressions whenever the game was at its lowest, I would say something like, Either you're the content creators are just lucky. I think that the game itself is dead and all those views are bots. But, like, it, it really did used to be like that. You know, views were high and the player base was so low it was almost unnoticeable. But now the game is probably at close to its peak as far as players have gone. And, you know, a lot of people are playing. I can get into a match of Dominion really quickly. I can get into a match of Breach. And, they've, you know, with the release of uh, the new game mode Breach, it's been doing excessively well. Like, I didn't even know that it was going to do that well. I thought it was going to die off, but a lot of people enjoy playing it. That content, as well as the new style, the new rep cap and all that, giving them incentive to play, really has helped out. And I don't think it's dead but I do think that we're basically, we're not milking a dead cow. We're beating the horse that's milking the dead cow. You know? Right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I know agree. that's a weird way of saying it, but. I, I, I understand what you're saying. It's well, pretty much like we, the game isn't dead, but it was, and we're trying to bring it back. Yeah. We're, we're trying to re revive it after, after we started digging the grave. We're trying to shit. Now it's time for CPR. <laughs> Almost. Exactly. But, um, now, transferring into this, this is something I usually ask people, but I already know kind of your answer to it, I think, before you, I even say it. So I usually ask people a question, like, if it, quote unquote, if the game is dead and it stops getting support, people are just simply watching the stuff for you, not even the game itself, really, and they don't care about it. 
I'll ask like, will you continue to make content? And I'm pretty sure your answer is going to be yes. Um, you lie. I, I lie. You don't want to make content. For Honor is all you live for. I, I'm not going to make content anything. If, if For Honor dies, I die with it. <laughs> That's, live by the train. Live by the parry. Die by the parry. That is that is dedication, and I I exactly. respect I respect you for that. But bro, I, I just red pilled the hell out of you. <laughs> yeah, you did. I was I was not expecting that. This entire thing is going off the rails right now, and I don't know of how to. Of course, regain. I'm going to make content, bro. <laughs> of course, I'm going to make content. I I told you ever since I was a kid, my parents always told me I'm going to be on stage for something. I'll perform, but like, but but what content do you stone. want to make? I I don't know. I was thinking something like E Dubs. E Dubs seems like a nice guy. <laughs> you want to make E Dubs content? <laughs> make your sure. make your talent hates everyone is is the next content cup. If I get to complain about other people for a living and complain going to spend money at the lottery for a living of course but i kind of want to make stuff that's featured around technology and kind of the emotion that it brings to people because i think that's artful i think that it's really something else it's something to behold whenever something that doesn't even exist in reality can bring so much emotion forward like the climax of god of war's story or red dead redemption the ending of both of the games wherever your protagonist is back against the wall and you're having to watch it all go down i mean i've seen people cry over stuff like that i mean we'll take a look at somebody that i personally love etika you know about etika right yes etika is this massive streamer or was a massive streamer that does reactions to a bunch of things his, and his smash reactions he just were the gets best so hype he yeah. gets so excited and i love watching that yeah it's amazing to me that games can do stuff that, like that for us. They can bring that emotion forward without even being present in our everyday life as a reality. They're just there to entertain, but they're able to do so much for the individual. So if I were to make content, I'd of course want to stay in a community similar to the one that's in For Honor. So I, I'm trying right. to go into Monster Hunter, into Tekken, and fighting games, because mm -hmm. I think that that's emotionally provoking things but not in a tame manner. Fighting games are always more off the wall and kind of wild to watch. So, right. I, I mean, mean, I guess that's just more suiting to my style. I mean, I completely agree with you. I mean, Final Seven, Final Fantasy Seven Crisis Core on the PSP had me feeling some type of way back in the day. Ooh, I think that was maybe one of the only tears I've shed during a video game. But that was that was some, that was some sad shit. But uh, now I'm curious. Do you do you want to stray away from like actually? doing game like not like game things obviously because you're going to be focused on games but like said making like playing the game the focal point of said video and rather discussing the game being the focal point of the video as was mentioned prior i talked about pyro cynical and one of his most popular videos of all time is called petscop he talks about another game that doesn't exist and it's, you know, that for some reason really appeals to people, but he didn't play the game, didn't touch it at all. He just watched someone else's playthrough of it and observed what was going on and talked about it throughout it. And he was doing a great job with it. I love his commentary and the way that he inspects things and describes them. It's like watching someone watching a movie and then describing it as an audiobook. Right. But it's kind of an inception. Yeah. And I, I think that that kind of content could be... Uh, an interesting facet to strive for but I, don't, I personally don't know i'll try my best to do whatever i can with my content if that eventually becomes what i do then i don't see why i wouldn't right i i completely agree with you and i know you've you've uh you've not really been one to stray away from trying new things like you'll you'll stream basically whatever game you're enjoying at the moment i know you were you were streaming some spyro recently and you always stream like some dark souls as well in there because you're you're a big fan of that but um curious uh any games on your radar for the future that are coming out that you're like looking like, ooh, this looks uh, this looks looks re re really nice. Um, none in particular, if I'm completely honest. <laughs> Smash Smash was the one that I was looking forward to the most, and as I told you about, I plan on making content on it as soon as I can get my tech is situated. It, which, thank you for the suggestion, by the way, it was very kind of you. Is it is it is it fun? It's so much fun, All right, good Tony. Shit, good shit, good Tony, shit. it's so good. I only played it when I was drunk, so I can't really give a good. I can't give a good opinion. I of only it. played it when I was thirteen, so basically when I was drunk as well. So <laughs> it was. It's such an amazing game, but 
it, it's not i don't feel competitive in it yet i don't feel that competitive draw i just feel like having fun and i need to break that because i want to get better at the game but right. i don't want to get too serious because that's the mistake that i made with for honor i need to find a balance same and then the only other game that's really interesting me as of what i've heard this year has been an expansion to monster hunter and that's iceborne right i heard you talk it's about that massive expansion somewhat over like i've heard rumors that it's going to be over 40 new monsters and an entire new ice map Ooh. and i'm super excited for it but it's coming out in i think november is what they said all right yeah so it's still it's still a little while away that actually sounds great i actually really enjoyed monster hunter but i felt like i did everything and then like once you once you i mean it was back in the day like once you beat xeno jiva it was just like all right time to just do the same thing again but they're tempered now and i don't know oh, no, there's a lot more now i there's know i'm just more. not a i'm not a very grind heavy person i don't know i can never get Rep into that yeah shut up that took me like two years all right <laughs> All right, just get on Monster Hunter for two years. Yeah, true. I mean, I played like 100 hours in the first week. I'm not even going to lie. But uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a couple other games coming out that I think you would like. Like, have you l looked at like uh, Sekiro? The Shadows Die Twice? Uh, yeah, I have. And I very well might get into that. I'll just have to make up my mind on it. Right. Because and, uh, I, I've, I've heard a lot about it. And if you didn't know, in the game, well, there's two different ways of pronouncing it. Deracine or Deracine which is another game that was created by uh, From Software, which is the creators of Dark right. Souls, Bloodborne, and Sek Sekiro now. They put in a kind of shout to Bloodborne. There was a doll that was the doll from your dream, modeled after Lady Maria from Bloodborne, and it was doing the make contact gesture from Bloodborne. And it says, a doll who is a character from a tale not yet finished. Bloodborne so, 2? If that is what we believe it to be, as there's been a lot of speculation going around, it very well might be Bloodborne 2. So if that ends up coming around anytime in the next year, two years, something like that, I'm, that would probably be the game that really draws me in and makes me want to grind as hard as I can to make content, as hard as I can to beat the game, and just experience it. Because Bloodborne was honestly one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, I, I, I hear you on that. And I'm, I'm also super hyped for a game that's like not really like... Uh that same type of style but it's like ghost of tsushima you might have heard of it um it's made by the same people who make the infamous series and that's actually one of my favorite game series and that's the those are the only games that that uh, actual developer has made and now they're making uh this game it's like an it's almost like an open world samurai game which i'm pretty hyped for as well so there's i, I still think we're getting a lot of i think 2019 is going to be a pretty big year for games so that's going to be pretty uh pretty good to see but Moving on now into more of a like almost like rapid fire question thing that I do to kind of wrap up the entire episode. I'll just uh, ask you a few things. You can choose pass if you want to, if you can't really think of it, or uh, just just a couple quick uh, answers off the top of your head um, on some just random questions. So first one would be, what is your favorite game of all time? Favorite game of all time would have to be Spyro the Dragon, which was I so I was so excited whenever it came out. Again, as the the remaster. Good shit. Good shit. Now. Uh, I I know you don't play too much For Honor anymore, but if you could design a dream character, like your dream character, what would it be? My dream character probably would have been Valkyrie in the first place. If I were to try to create another one, though, I would say give it animalistic uh, movements. Not like Shaman, who's predatorial, but at the same time exhibits kind of humanoid ideas. Like you have the concept of she runs like a normal person. She does all this normal stuff. I would like a character that is almost exclusively bare hands, bare fists, give her the ability to use her hands with sharpened claws. Not really a gauntlet, but maybe a weaponized thing that she puts around the tips of her fingers that can slice. Something like that would be absolutely incredible, I think. And it would be revolutionary for the game because you could give her different attributes. Right. I Very think that, unique. That's a, that's a pretty cool one. A lot of people kind of want like a bare handed type brawler of some some sort, but... Uh, the movement thing is pretty interesting to see. Now, this one, this one is might honestly be hard for you to think, but uh, if you could design a game, just like any video game, what would you want it to be about? If I could design a game, I would want it to be similar to. Uh, I, what is the name? Sinuous Sacrifice. Oh my god, that game's fucking great. Now, the reason that I say that is because. I suffered from mental health issues in the past, and I understand that a lot of people go through it themselves. 
So I would want to create a game that's not only you know multiplayer accessible. I mean, that's genuinely something that I feel like every game should have is the ability to play with your friends. I don't think that it needs to be competitive. That's why I think Monster Hunter is so brilliant it's because you can completely avoid a competitive scene unless you get into speedrunning. Like that's that's really just it. Challenge runs and speedrunning is the only time that you're going to be competitive in the game. And other than that, you're just enjoying it with friends. But to have a game with a campaign and a story mode similar to the layout of Call of Duty, but have it focused on the underlying roots of anxiety or depression or even just very obscure mental problems, things like disassociative identity disorder or schizophrenia or anything like that. Because, I mean, I've been through therapy. I've had my share of things that you know people have said to me, and I know a couple of things that I don't really make that public about myself, but... If I were to do something like that and create a game, I'd want it to be something that speaks to people at the same time as create an environment for them to live in and comfortably survive in a body similar to what we do in For Honor. Because when you set foot in For Honor, when you pick up your controller and you're playing Kensei, I know what it feels like to you. Everybody that plays games and plays them passionately knows what it feels like. It feels like you're stepping into another body. It feels like you're stepping into a new skin, right? Right, yeah. So I'd want to make a game that feels like that. Oh, yeah, and I- I'd want it to be... I want it to be a personal game as well as in depth. I think that's that's good, and I think that's that's a good uh, thing to mention as well. Because Send You a Sacrifice, I think t- tackled psychosis pretty well with all the sounds and everything, just like all the voices in your head. That was a absolutely that was a really interesting game to play. Definitely would recommend if you guys haven't. It's really good. Um, but moving on from that and complete one eighty, we're going to talk about your videos, right? What are the most annoying comments that you receive on videos? Take a guess. You, no, I want you to tell me. No, you take a guess. I, I don't. I'll know. let you know if you're right. I don't know that you're stupid and you don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. That's not a mean comment, Tony. That's an insult and it hurts my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I just the most fe- annoying comments that I get are the ones that tell me to go back to For Honor, and I, I hate it when this happens because it's not. It's not even that I hate the game that much. It's that I don't like being told what to do on a channel that is focused around me. You know, like it's not focused around the game. It's focused around me personally. It's focused on my opinions and my do's and don'ts. And yet someone will still have the capacity to think, oh, you know what? I I know what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go onto his turf on his channel and go, hmm, play this game. No, I I, I hear you on that. That's like I'll, I'll stream it. Like I usually do like daily DVD streams too. I'll get the occasional person who just comes in and just types play for honor. Kind of one makes me kick them in the uterus or something, but uh, they, it's it just, Makes them it's just tie like, their intestines into a balloon animal. It's like, why would, yeah, I, I completely feel you on that one. Like, why would you go to a video or a stream? That's a different game because the person probably wanted to play that game. And then you're telling them to play another game. I got an actual video that I'll send you after this. That's, that's pretty funny. Um, oh no that that mentality though that's basically setting foot in the doorway putting your hands behind your back and saying mom said it's my turn on the xbox oh honestly yeah that's completely what it is it's immature it's immature on the behalf of the person typing it out and sometimes people ignore it but i think it does need to be addressed that whenever we're in a community like this if you guys say that you think that it's cancerous and toxic imagine what happens when you have thousands of people paying attention to you while you're playing it yeah honestly right everyone you know, you can, you can like, yeah, when, when you're not creating the content yourself, it's like, it's so easy to type into someone and eh, do this, do that. But then you don't think about the, the person who's actually making the stuff and what and whatnot. But yeah, no, I agree with you on that wholeheartedly. Now I usually ask people like favorite, like for honor YouTuber and streamer, but I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, fuck that. Just what is your, who's your favorite streamer? And then who's your favorite creator just of all, of time? all time? Yeah. All right. Uh, favorite content creator of all time would have to be Cryos. Uh, he makes extremely good content. I think that his content is some of the best out there. I agree. Editing wise, editing wise, he is phenomenal. Most mm-hmm. of his edits just blow my mind sometimes. And that and the fact that he consistently uploads and still puts out that amazing content, it, it makes me very happy to watch. And I'm so proud of him for making it to a million subscribers. I think it's one of the most well-deserved milestones I've ever seen. Well, I mean, I agree with that. I want to subtitle one video and die, but the fact that yeah they do that so consistently mad respect. uh and my my favorite streamer of all time see this one's a different question because i don't watch a lot of streams besides my own if i'm like trying to check over it and look wow. for highlights narcissist okay yeah a little bit 
Uh, I watch a bunch of streams on For Honor, but I don't want to limit myself to that. If I were going to look for somebody that I love watching their streams exclusively because you know they they're really good with streaming, I'm I'm going to blow some minds here with how much how often my uh, my content that I watch changes. I'm going to go with Tear of Grace. Okay, okay. Tear of Grace has to be one of the best streamers. And I say that because that man has the gift of gab beyond anything I've ever seen. He can talk and talk and talk, and his mouth just never stops moving because he always knows what he's going to say next. He's able to come up with jokes on the fly. He's able to move quickly. He's able to bounce around from subject to subject, and I love watching it because he's got a great mind. Filthy House, bunch of cats that I really dislike, but he's got a great mind. Right, yeah. I mean, uh, Tear of of Grace is the Binding of Isaac guy, right? He does a lot of... yeah. Binding of Isaac. He stuff. also plays. He also plays Shadow of War and uh, a couple of other games that you know he does one-offs and things like that. He's also played For Honor in the past. Surprisingly, I didn't even know about it until a couple of months ago when I watched it. But you know, he he has done it. Right, and, and I'm not too familiar with Filthy House. Filthy House is not a, a content creator. Oh well, as a streamer. Oh, it's not a streamer. I thought you said Filthy House. There's a filthy, he has a filthy house and three cats that I dislike. Oh, I thought you said filthy. I was like, who the fuck is filthy house? I've never heard of this person. Okay. Oh, right. sorry. I'm dyslexic and I was trying to say filthy Frank. Oh, filthy, <laughs> filthy Frank. Okay. Honestly, I, that boy's gone. I probably would have gone with him instead. Okay. Yeah. No, filthy, filthy Frank's in that music scene now, dude. What do you mean? Hell yeah. He's, Br- he's out of here though. Like content no more. He's making music. Yeah. Just straight in there. And then. Um, wrapping this up with the, the final question that everybody loves, everybody wants to hear, it really gets the, the gears going. Should they make them being Ubisoft a for honor dose? No. Care to expand? <laughs> no, not really. I just think that it was a mistake to have released the game in the state that it was created in. And I feel as though if they put out another game, it's going to end up the same way. We're going to be put back in the same scenario that we were put in right now unless they release it in a solid five years. And I say that seriously. Five years of development, extra, testing, playing, putting in the professional players from the old game and putting in the content creators to give their inputs. I don't think that they should release a For Honor 2. All right. That's completely understandable. And I, I've i had other people say basically the same thing. But... um. It's just interesting to get people's take on it because some people have kind of said like, yeah, it'd be cool to see and other people are just like, nah, they just need to make sure they get it right. And I yep. respect both sides of the argument. Um, but that's actually the last question I had for this podcast. Um, obviously, guys, if you want to check out Talon, his link will be in the top of the description as well as the pinned comment for his YouTube channel. I don't know if you have any other socials that you really uh, None that go I on. use. None, None that, that I use. promote. Okay, so his YouTube will be linked again in the description and the pinned comment. Um, he's, he's a really good... I'd say I'd say his personality is better than I honestly think his is like gameplay stuff because he's such a good voice for, you know, discussion videos and he does a lot of research on stuff. So I, I, that's my favorite part of his stuff. So if you like discussions and well thought out videos and things of that, I'd definitely say check him out. Um, if there's anything else that you have to say, Talon, go for it right now. Otherwise, we'll end it. I want to thank you for having me on the podcast first and foremost, Tony. I mean, it was very nice of you. You, you invited me out here and you had me out and I had some PC problems, but now we're just talking it out and having a good time. I, I feel like this was very successful and I want to thank everybody for watching as well. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Talon, for joining me. And I hope all of you guys who are watching have a great rest of your day and a great holiday season. I'll try to try to be consistent with the podcast next week, but again, schedules might be a little bit difficult, so we'll just have to see then. But thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of your day. See ya. And as always, stay sharp.